So you get to the CrossFit gym and you see, uh, or I, I see other moms, I see other dads, I see um, people who have competitive aspirations and I'm able to mentor. And so it kind of feeds a lot of things at once and that's 45 minutes to an hour and a half. And then you walk away feeling very fulfilled and able to be your best at the rest of your day. And I think so refreshing too, just to go in and know you can give your your best in a workout. Maybe the people around you are going to push you harder than you would if you were in your basement or your garage. But but having no pressure. Like I think before training, it was always I have to do better. I have to get a certain time. I have to set a new PR every single day. And that is a lot of pressure to live with. But in real life, I think the consistency trumps the performance. And if you can be consistent with your training every day and put yourself in a good training environment that's going to bring out you know, your best, then you don't have to take so much of that pressure and that stress on yourself. This is episode number 121 of Pursuing Health featuring Christy Atkins and Lindy Barber. Welcome to Pursuing Health. I'm Julie Fouché, family medicine resident and former CrossFit Games athlete. Here, I bring to you information and inspiration from experts and everyday individuals for how to use lifestyle to maximize health. Thank you so much for joining me. Now let's get started with this week's episode. Hello there, everybody, and welcome back to Pursuing Health. I'm really excited to share this conversation with you that I had with my good friends, Christy Atkins and Lindy Barber at the 2019 CrossFit Games. The three of us have competed together in the CrossFit Games, and over the past several years, we've all transitioned away from competition and into other endeavors in our lives. Christy, who's an eight times CrossFit Games athlete, competed from 2009 through 2017, and she's made a transition from CrossFit Games athlete through pregnancy and now to mom of an adorable 15-month-old son. Lindy has more recently retired from competition in the past year after two individual CrossFit Games appearances and three podium finishes on Team CrossFit Mayhem Freedom since 2012. Lindy has now turned her attention to in-person and online coaching as she continues to navigate her life and direction after sport. So the three of us sat down in a live podcast recording at the Reebok store at the 2019 CrossFit Games, and there we all shared stories about the life and fitness transitions that the three of us have gone through over the last few years, and what it looks like to shift from training as a competitive athlete to training for health and longevity. There's so much wisdom packed in here from these ladies that I think anyone can apply to prioritizing and balancing and evolving the role of fitness in different stages of life. Just as a heads up, live podcast recording does come with a certain set of unexpected variables. And for this episode, one of those variables was background music. So unknown to me at the time, not only was I recording this conversation between myself, Christy and Lindy outside the Reebok store, but I was also picking up the music that was playing inside the store on the same track. So there's some music playing in the background of this one louder than I would like, but I hope that it just helps you to feel like you were there with us in person rather than being too distracting. The conversation was just too good not to share for this reason. Before we get started, this is a reminder that although I am now officially a doctor, this podcast is meant to share the experiences of individuals and does not provide medical advice. So with that, we'll get started with episode 121 of Pursuing Health featuring Christy Adkins and Lindy Barber. Welcome to the Pursuing Health Podcast. Once again, I'm super excited to be here with Lindy Barber and Christy Adkins. And you have both been wonderful guests on the podcast before. We've heard both of your stories, but it's been a while and a lot has happened. And I think the three of us have all been through a lot of different transitions in life and in our fitness over the past three or four years. And so I think there's a lot we can chat about. So I thought maybe we could start just each of us going through kind of what transitions we've gone through with our fitness and our competitive and other endeavors over the past couple of years and then what factors played a role and how did you make these big decisions about how to transition you want to start us off lindy yes i will uh my name is lindy barber as julie said 
I've been competing in CrossFit since I started in 2012, and then I've been competing at or for the Games since 2013. I was an individual in 13 and 15 here at the Games, and then I was also on a team, CrossFit Mayhem Freedom, in 16, 17, and last year in 2018. This is my first year not competing or not training to compete at the CrossFit Games since then. And I've had a huge life transition in the last year, trying to adjust, get used to that, figure out what life is like, not training six to seven hours a day. And ultimately what made that decision for me is the fact that I had a pretty serious back injury back in 2011 and had to overcome that to even start training again for the CrossFit Games. And over the last season of 2018, I started to have a lot more nagging injuries. My back would flare up a lot more often. And it was more painful of training than I had been through in a lot of years. And I feel like my body was just kind of asking for a break. It was one of those that- Keep the microphone clear. Sorry. It was one of those that I really thought that my body was just starting to break down in a way that I didn't want to keep pushing it. I wanted to maintain healthy lifestyle for the rest of time and I didn't want to continue to push it for another year and just see what happened when I was already starting to have a little bit more pain day to day in day in and day out on top of that I was also feeling a little bit more pressure in every single day of my workouts it was starting to feel a little bit more like a job it was a little bit less fun at every single day throughout the training and I didn't want to lose myself in training I wanted to be able to just stay in love with CrossFit and the sport of it in itself and I didn't want it to turn into something that I was going to resent within another year and the fact that I was starting to have those aches and pains about the sport in general I didn't want to end on a bad note so I wanted to finish still loving the sport still wanting to do it for forever and it just felt like the time for me to move on to other things. Yeah. And you went out on a high note, obviously, last year, and you knew it was going to be your last season going in. Did. What did it feel like once it was finally once it was finally over and you knew you weren't going to be necessarily going back to training for competition? It was, it was extremely overwhelming because I knew and I told my team before regionals even that this is going to be my last year. I'm ready to move on to something else. I will 100% commit to you guys until August and I'm not going anywhere. I'm 100% committed to our goal of winning the games and to being with you. But they knew the whole rest of the season that this is going to be my last year. So leading into the last couple weeks of the games, I was very emotional every single day in training. And I would like come in and they'd be like, are you okay? And I'd already been crying in my car before like I even got into training. And so they knew that I was not, I was not leaving because I didn't love them as a team or because I hated them or because they were ruining the experience. It was way more of a personal, I just, I was ready to move on in my own life, in my own journey and in my own fitness journey overall. So it was, and then when we got to the games, all of a sudden it like went away because it was competition time and this is what I was working for. But then the last event came and they announced what the last event was. And thankfully we had worked hard enough the rest of the weekend that we could have come in last and still won the games before that last event. But I was like freaking out before that last event. And I was again, crying in the warm up area. And Rich was like, listen, it's fine. Like we're gonna be okay. And I was like, I know it has nothing to do with the workout. Like whatever, I just don't really care because I just knew it was gonna be my last workout. Like I knew that no matter what happened, this was my last time being out on the competition floor. This is my last time at the games. I knew it was ending and it was extremely overwhelming for me. And we did really well in that workout. And then I like said my goodbye to the crowd, literally cried for the next two hours, like with my family and back in the area and saying goodbye to everybody. Because it, I mean, you do, like you fall in love with the people that you compete with and CrossFit's really special that the people that you actually compete with, not only on your team, but your other competitors become your really good friends and the people you see year after year. And I was already Already starting to miss the fact that I was going to not see you guys and everyone else through competition every single year and it was like a reunion that I was going to be sad to miss so I was excited for a new chapter but it was closing the door to a whole extremely amazing aspect of my life that was an extremely overwhelming emotion. Yeah, very emotional. All right, Chris, you've had a little bit of a different couple of years. Tell us about your journey. I was just going to say, Lindy, though, but it turns out you're back here. We're all together. <laughs> Um, it still has that reunion feel, almost maybe a little more now because we're we're a little more laid back and actually hanging out <laughs> instead of warming up. You can enjoy, enjoy yourself a little bit more. You can yeah. enjoy yourself a little more. Yeah, I, I speak for, as someone who is a couple years out of um, competition mode. I competed as an individual at the CrossFit Games uh, seven times between 2009 and 2016. Uh, my first big transition was in 20, at the end of 2014, I went all in as a CrossFit athlete. Uh, so I left my full-time job as a registered nurse um, to train full-time. 
And then, um, you know, they the saying goes, you make a plan and God laughs at it. Um, so I tore my uh, bicep tendon um, preparing for the uh, 2016 CrossFit game season. Oh, actually, and to back up, didn't qualify in 2015. I went all in and then didn't qualify. And then uh, as part of my comeback um, to get to the 2016 games, tore my bicep tendon, went through shoulder surgery, um, but was able to rehab it and um, was able to, um, for my individual experience, uh, go out on a really high note by qualifying for the 2016 CrossFit Games and competing as an individual one last time. So that was- um, That was, was so amazing, watching that regional, watching you qualify after everything you'd been through that year. So cool. Thank you. It, it's one of my uh, high, high points of my CrossFit career was, the, was that moment and then um, the events to follow at the CrossFit Games. It was the last year that it was in um, Carson and they took us back to Aromas. So it was, it was a great experience all around. Um, and then in 2017, I transitioned back to um, work as a nurse um, and I transitioned into team competition. Um, my, I, we knew at the time, my husband and I knew we wanted to start a family someday. And um, I knew I was retired from individual, but then all of a sudden it was like, you know what? I don't think we're ready yet for, for, the, for the family part. So, um, worked as a nurse, competed um, on a team, and we were fortunate enough to make it back to the games in 2017, and we competed here at, in Madison. So that was a great experience. When I was done with that um, season, um, then I was really ready. I would say by regionals of that 2017 season, I was like, I, I want to be a mom so bad. And my husband wants to be a dad and we want to do this. And um, we were very fortunate to uh, get pregnant um, a, a few weeks after the um, end of the CrossFit Games 2017. Um, not wasting any time. <laughs> not wasting any time. Um, so that, that was fortunate. Um, and then thus began my next journey um, in life and my next huge transition, what, which was going from um, a competitive athlete to um, a pregnant athlete and um, just a pregnant person in general, um, having, the ba having my baby. And um, now uh, he is 15 months old. And so um, I do CrossFit um, for health and fitness. And um, they, they expressed it, the um, thing that I learned through prenatal training was once you're postpartum, you're always postpartum for the rest of your life. So um, I'm a postpartum athlete now. <laughs> awesome, and he is adorable. It's been so fun to see him around here. Thank you, walking, we are running, very and proud. <laughs> <laughs> already getting excited about CrossFit. <laughs> um, so yeah, I guess I'll just uh, talk a little bit about my transitions because most people listening to the podcast probably know about them, but um, it's been very interesting for me. So I knew 2015 would be my last season and just by the way that the decision was kind of made for me based on the way that my school schedule fell and I wasn't going to be able to take any more time away from school to train. And by that time, it really was a full-time job. It was really difficult, I think, for anyone to try to balance a second career on top of training for the games. And um, so I kind of also went all in on that year. I was doing a couple of years of research during school, but I was really focused on training. And um, unfortunately, we, we I think know how that ended up with my Achilles at regionals. But for me, in a lot of ways, as I've reflected on it over the past four, I guess, four years now, it really was in a lot of ways kind of a perfect ending for me because for so many years, I think I had struggled to have confidence in my own abilities and to really enjoy the process. And that season, knowing it was my last, I really feel like I did. Um, and I really had no regrets and gave it everything I had. And knowing that at the end of the day, it isn't always about the outcome, but it's about what you learn along the way. So that, um, it was still a great ending for me. And since then, I've been full force back into medical training, going through finishing med school, going through residency. So now I'm starting my last year of residency. And um, training has looked different during all those different phases. There's definitely been phases where I've been more on top of training. I've competed with a team at regionals one year, an individual one year at regionals after you know my first year out. That has always been fun. It's always, I think, totally different to go into competition knowing that you're just there for a good time and to have fun. Um, but I've enjoyed the different phases and now I'm really just trying to work out when I can and, and do it for health and long-term longevity. So, so 
So I'm interested for you guys, what does it look like now, your, your training goals, or how does your training look now compared to, obviously, what it did when you were training for competition? And what's really the difference when you say you're training for health or longevity? What does that mean? Um, and how is it different from how you used to train as a competitive athlete? Just going back to uh, your experience in 2015, I think in some ways that's how you can know you have arrived or matured as um, a competitive athlete is when you genuinely know that the process through that year was you put everything you had into it and no matter the outcome, it was injury for you. For me, it was finishing, um, actually my worst finish at the CrossFit Games was in 2016, but I was in the best shape of my life. And so I think it, you, you felt similarly in 2015. Um, so that's when you know you've arrived, I feel like, as a mature athlete, is being able to walk away from that season with complete satisfaction, contentment, pride, um, no matter the outcome, because you know what you did in the process on the way there. Um, so true. So yeah, the, the transition from that, from that mentality um, of uh, every day, you're at, you wake up in the morning, you're asking yourself, how can you get better at your craft? How can you get better at your sport? And you're centering your life around that. That's very different from uh, when then you, you're switching gears and you're focusing on career or focusing, in, in my case, on um, being a new parent. Um, and so the, um, the training now is obviously a lot less hours. Um, my goal is to, to do the workout of the day with the class um, four to five days a week. So I shoot for five days. I kind of look at my week and see, can I make it in? And if I make it at least three, I'm, I'm satisfied with that. And it's also enough for me to feel good um, physically and emotionally um, is, is to get that workout of the day in. Um, and it, it feeds a lot of different um, needs because it checks the physical box, but it checks the social box and the community building box and that feeling of uh, your, a shared experience. So you get to the CrossFit gym and you see, uh, or I, I see other moms, I see other dads, I see um, people who have competitive aspirations and I'm able to mentor. And so it kind of feeds a lot of things at once and that's 45 minutes to an hour and a half and then you walk away feeling very fulfilled and able to be your best at the rest of your day. And I think so refreshing too, just to go in and know you can give your, your best in a workout. Maybe the people around you are gonna push you harder than you would if you were in your basement or your garage, but, but having no pressure. Like I think before training, it was always, I have to do better. I have to get a certain time. I have to set a new PR every single day. And that's a lot of pressure to live with, but in real life, I think the consistency trumps the performance. And if you can be consistent with your training every day and put yourself in a good training environment that's going to bring out, you know, your best, then you don't have to take so much of that pressure and that stress on yourself. My training is now trying to find um, a sense of happiness and, and confidence in the fact that one hour a day is enough. So I'm still working through this place that I literally for the last three years of my life, but beyond this last year, from 2015 all the way through the 2018 season, my whole day revolved around the four or five, if not upwards of six to seven workouts or hours a day that I was using in my training or that I was doing training to make sure that I was going to accomplish the goal for that year. And that goal for that year and the goal for that day was to make sure that I am as fit as I can be to help my team win the CrossFit Games. And that was the only thought that I had, which means that everything else was second, which going out was second, hanging out with other friends was second, whatever, like having a cheat meal was second, like none of that mattered. Everything was all focused on that training. So right now I'm still, I'm still in the process of trying to figure out what it looks like to have all those hours back and what can I do with all those hours and literally so now since I still work in a gym in the beginning it was kind of a hard transition because when I was in a gym I was exercising and I was training so I was like well I have 45 minutes like I should probably get another piece in or I should do another strength lift until the point that everyone was like you like you, you already did this so you already worked out for an hour you don't also have to do accessory you don't also have to get more strength in but it was just so what I was used to and what I intentionally programmed in myself was to do more. More was gonna make you better, more was gonna make you fitter, more was gonna allow you to adapt better so that when you get to the games, things feel easier. And I had pre-programmed that, so now I'm trying to 
change those thoughts in my head to be okay with the fact that like, yeah, an hour, all you're trying to do right now is to live for the rest of your life and be able to pick up your grandkids and to carry your groceries in one trip. Like really, that's what we're training for. So I don't need to snatch heavy. I don't need to squat every other day. Like there's a lot of things that I've been pre-programmed that were weaknesses of mine that I wanted to continue on that I'm now trying to get out of the vocabulary that's in my head of more is better and more volume is necessary. So I'm in, a, I'm in a weird balancing act of trying to figure out other ways to satisfy that itch of being competitive or having a goal or having a drive and finding new things to spend my time doing that don't involve snatching more, doing more muscle ups, those kinds of things, because that's always been my forefront and the goals that I have. So my training has definitely changed. In the very beginning, it was I was just still kind of doing stuff alone by myself as we were transitioning. I now enjoy doing the class workouts, um, but I also more so enjoy doing stuff that I haven't been doing in a lot of years, like some bodybuilding work, some cardio stuff. Like I really love taking cycling classes, like these kinds of things that I used to really love doing and just never did while I was crossfitting because it wasn't necessarily benefiting my weaknesses in CrossFit that now are super fun. Like Soul Cycle, I've loved doing. Like I also have loved just having someone else tell me exactly what to do and I don't have to like think about it. So it's been really fun to be able to experiment a little bit and figure out what I actually want to do with my fitness every single day. And it's okay if I don't CrossFit six days a week. Like I can go to Soul Cycle and still count that as my workout for the day. Because right, I'm, it's not an active recovery. It's not necessarily an active recovery. <laughs> Recovery, it's right? an actual workout. It's actually a good <laughs> hard workout if you go really hard in it. So yeah. I love, I mean, it's it's now becoming a fun thing for me to be able to find new things that, oh, this is actually really fun. And bodybuilding still makes you really exhausted. And yeah. it's just fun to kind of like be able to play with it a little bit more without the stress of worry because it's now just your craft that yeah. you're trying to get your best at. And I think that's super, again, mature of you because I think so many people, even, even if you're not necessarily training for a competition, so many people see the volume that the games athletes are doing and think that volume is the answer for getting fitter or even for health when in fact CrossFit is super effective and one of the you know most amazing things about it from the beginning was you can get a really effective workout in a really short amount of time so it's really efficient um, but I think so many times people think that oh I need to actually get a run in and then go to a CrossFit, CrossFit class or do a cycling class or mix in extra work but um, if we want to do it for the long run, it doesn't really take much to have a really effective stimulus. And it's a hard, it's a hard thing to accept once you've been on the other side, where you see Absolutely. the volume, like as you said, that other people are doing in the glorious world of Instagram as it is, and all you see are people doing all of these things, but every human body is different. And yeah. some people can handle a little bit more, but you don't need it. It's not necessary to be a healthy individual. Yeah. Um, on that note, talking about Instagram and all its glory, can you talk, let's talk a little bit about just body image and how your relationship with your body has changed through these different phases. Um, I don't know who wants to go first. Okay. This, <laughs> pass it back and forth. Um, I could probably talk about this for the next two hours, but this is another I know portion. I know you have a plan. We'll but um, I have gone through kind of every bit of up and down that you could possibly do as a female with body image. I started when I was young as super confident, and then I was a soccer player, and then I got super, super skinny because all I did was run and not lift weights. But that's what was like accepted in the time frame. And but then I started in the CrossFit world and loved feeling strong and gaining muscle. And then I wanted more muscle. So then I was trying to figure out how I could gain even more muscle on my body because I wanted to be stronger and I wanted to feel fitter. And then being in the world of CrossFit, I kind of got out of that a little bit because then I could care less about what I looked like because as long as I was performing well and doing what I was asking of my body and it was performing in the way that I wanted it to, then I was really happy. And then now, ever since leaving CrossFit, I was used to being in this certain fit body because I was training for so many hours a day and it was just part of the process that trying to be okay with the gaining fat back and not having all the muscle and losing weight, but losing all of the muscle that I had gained when worked so hard for over the last couple of years has definitely been a hard struggle for me, especially with the food aspect, because food for the last seven years has been nothing but fuel. I could care less what it was as long as it was gonna fuel my next session and make me feel good in the next conditioning piece that I had. And now I'm trying to figure out like what my actual body wants and what it wants to look like and what it actually likes to be fueled with as opposed to just doing what I tell it. So I'm trying to like find that new relationship with food 
and I still look at a plate of food and immediately start to calculate the macros because that's just what I've pre-programmed my brain to do and I'm trying to tone that down and tell myself like well if you're extra hungry today there's a reason for that or if you want that extra you know whatever it is that extra piece of chicken even if it's over the five ounces like it's gonna be okay your body wants it for some reason and trying to find that own balance with myself as to like actually relearning how to listen to hunger signals and if I'm actually hungry or if I just feel like I should be eating because it's been two hours all these kinds of things that I programmed into my own head and into my own personality on purpose to make sure that I was the best athlete that I could be I'm now trying to just resurface them into well what is going to make me feel my best and what is going to make me feel good for the rest of the day and give me energy and what are those kinds of foods and eliminate the words cheat and bad food and like horrible food and special food for my vocabulary because at the end of the day it's really all just food and I'm trying to relearn that relationship and not just see it as a protein, a carb, and a fat but like as a well-rounded meal that's really yummy that I'm excited to eat. So I'm still kind of in that process learning it and trying to love my body for exactly what it is in this moment for what I'm trying to be as opposed to what it can do for me as an athlete which is the only way I've ever seen it really in my life. This is the first year in my whole 30 years of life basically that I've not been competing for something or trying to use my body for a competition. So I'm trying to learn this what is just life without competition um, aspect, which I know that is a very common thing for a lot of not only females, but individuals that are out there. So I'm with you, I feel ya. Like we're all going through this together and um, we're along the way. It's part of the journey. So true. I can echo that too, just I think I, w I went through that phase the fir for the first time when I was out of high school sports, so I didn't play any sports in college, and I, my first two years of college, I wasn't actively competing or playing any sports, and I felt really lost, and that's where some of the um, kind of negative relationship with food and self-image kind of surfaced, where I didn't know what to do, so I would just go to the gym and go on the elliptical or on the treadmill, and it was always about like how many calories are you burning, and then how many calories are you eating, and trying not to overdo it. And I just found myself constantly being consumed by these thoughts. Um, and then when I first found CrossFit, it was like, oh, finally, I can switch my thoughts back. And it's more about fueling myself for my workouts and how much, how well can you perform? And that was very refreshing for me. But then it's also been an interesting transition, like you said, going back from competing, where you're training at a very high volume, where I think for me, for many years, it almost... It almost had a negative impact on my relationship with food because it didn't matter as much because I was training so much that I could eat a lot and it was fine. And then now backing off a lot on the volume and really thinking about long-term health and longevity, I've had to really re-examine my relationship with food and like you said, kind of enjoying a meal for what it is and eliminating a lot of the emotions around it and, and thinking more about what actually does my body need to fuel this type of training. Agreed. I think it was a really healthy um, uh, mind switch to go from, um, you know, having kind of uh, very typical body image type concerns in high school um, and through college where you're worried about aesthetics a lot. Um, you know, are you, you know, how do I look in this outfit? How do I look in a bathing suit? Um, is is am I at the right weight for what, for whatever? Um, and so not really having any kind of um, objective measure, but just trying to weigh it against your, the image you see in the mirror or your self-esteem, um, which is a very slippery slope. And so I, um, I was grateful for CrossFit because when I first started, I was actually very uncomfortable with how my body was changing um, to be more muscular. And so I, I played sports growing up. I um, was always, always enjoyed being active and being athletic, but it wasn't until CrossFit that I saw some big changes in my body where I had muscles and started to have abs. And at the time, in 2007, eight and nine, it, people were saying like, oh, you look like a man, <laughs> and, it, and which, sounds so laughable and ridiculous to me now, especially when I look at pictures of myself then and see how small I was. Um, and so that was really uncomfortable and I had to reconcile that with, hey, you have a goal of going to the CrossFit Games, you see the women who are out there um, competing and how strong they are. I was looking at people like Tanya Wagner who had won the Games in 2008 and like, she's a strong woman and if you want to compete with her, and the women out there, um, 
this this is the way you're going to go. And um, so that was able to help me shed um, some of those concerns and that discomfort on on what I looked like and worried about, hey, you have you have performance goals. You want to be able to lift more weight. You want to be able to move um, uh, your your own body weight um, the way that those women do. So you're going to have to forget about caring whether people think muscles look cool or nice or attractive on you. Um, and so being able to have that messaging in my head and have positive role models around me in CrossFit women was huge. And then that transition from competing to pregnancy was so much smoother than I thought it would be. I remember saying to my husband before we ever got pregnant, um, like, my mom gained 60 pounds when she was pregnant and I'm gonna do the same and just know that I'm gonna get really big and you have to be okay with it. He's like, I think you need to be okay with it. You're the one who's worrying. Um, and when it happened, when I started to grow and grow a human being inside of me, I didn't care one bit about the, the weight that was coming on because it was supposed to be happening. And it was actually the most incredible experience of my life was um, to be able to just sit back, you know, get some physical activity, fuel my body, and then see these massive changes week to week and month to month without having to do anything. You know, that's very different than when you're training for the CrossFit Games and you're clawing and fighting for every um, pound of weight on your body, uh, like muscle that you're putting on or every um, PR uh, in the gym. And so to be able to just have already had that mindset of your body, um, what your, how your body changes is um, how it's working for you and it's performance based. It, it just really uh, transitioned nicely in pregnancy to, to be something that was um, really gratifying. Um, and then postpartum was similar. Um, I guess I just, w I'm at a place in my life, I'm, I'm 34 years old, I, they say you know, once you get to be 30 or older, you're, you start caring a lot less about the opinions of others. And so postpartum, I really just kept cutting myself a break. I'm like, I'm, I'm one month postpartum, I'm two months postpartum. I'm, right now I'm 15 months postpartum and every day in workouts I'm like, you're fine, you're doing good. You had a baby 15 months ago. So I'm gonna be doing that when he's 15 years old probably. Um, and I think that's healthy. You just, you gotta give yourself a pat on the back and, and just say like, I'm doing okay. <laughs> yeah, and just appreciate everything that your body is capable of. I think it's, you know, and just being happy, like, uh, like we always talk about, being happy with where you are right now. And I, I always, you know, we always wanna continue getting better or, evolving in different stages of our lives, but just really taking a step back and being really, probably pregnancy is the perfect place to do that. Just being amazed at what your body can do and where it is right in the moment. Um, so I wanna talk a little bit too about balance, because I know we're all doing a lot of different things. I know now competition is not our main focus. And for me, I think that was really refreshing too, where like we've talked about, when you are competing, every single thought throughout the entire day revolves around how can I make my performance better so that I can be where I need to be at the CrossFit Games. And as soon as I was done, it was so refreshing to me to finally feel like I could start putting other people above myself. And like, yeah, I'm gonna go to this friend's birthday dinner even though it's late and maybe I won't get quite enough sleep or whatever else might be going on. Um, and so it's been refreshing to try to, to prioritize other, other things above the training but it can be a slippery slope and it can be easy to all of a sudden want to do everything else. And we still obviously value fitness and we value taking care of ourselves. So how do you now think about and structure that time for yourself or your own health in relationship to everything else you're doing? Yeah, so for me, it's been a little bit of kind of the opposite as I'm still trying to balance only doing a workout in a day. I still have a internal desire to do more and to feel like I can do more and that my body can handle more. And I like told myself for a while that, well, because you trained it for so long, like you can't just go down to one hour. You need to like detox a bit, like only go to five hours and then only go to four hours. But I, what I'm excited about is exactly what you're talking about is that being able to like put, literally put other people first. Is that it, and I didn't even necessarily think about how selfish the sport really is. 
until I got to the other side of it. And it was exactly like everyone in my life, I had an incredible support system in the best way, but they were totally fine with me always saying no and not and needing a special dinner or like not eating whatever it was or going to the family function, but making sure that I leave, like Lindy needs to leave early. And it just became like a very routine thing. Like, well, Lindy needs to leave early because she needs to go to sleep. She's a train in the morning. And to me, like I stopped even thinking about the fact that it was a special case scenario just for Lindy, right? And now I'm like, like shit, like that was a lot of time. Like that was uh, for years that my family was totally fine with like Lindy needs her special thing because Lindy has to go compete. And now all of a sudden I'm like, no, Lindy's good. Like Lindy can hang out and like it's fine. But it's a weird, all of a sudden over this last year, I started to realize that because they still, they're still my wonderful family or my wonderful boyfriend that still like ask, like, do you want to leave early or do you want, should we make something else for you? And now I'm like, like, you guys know it's fine. Like everything's okay. And I'm back to this normal person, but they just got so used to just completely selflessly supporting me that I love now being able to give back and to like cook them food and to make special time for them and to not worry about taking a weekend off of training or a couple extra days to go spend time with my sister just because and not and her still being like well can you get in a workout in the morning and I'm like well what do you want to do in the morning and so I and I love being able to coach more and help other people and use all these experiences that I, I earned over the last three years but now I get to give it all back like I worked so hard to get them and to become a better coach and to get all these experiences that now I can transfer into everyone else that wants to have whatever their own fitness journey is and it's really fun to be able to like talk to these people to talk to everybody and all these athletes that I coach not only one-on-one -on -one, but and through my online training program as well and be able to use all the experiences that I went through to help them on their own fitness journey and spend more time and make more time for them because I don't need another workout. I want you to get in the time with me or I want to video coach you instead and I would rather make time for that instead. So I love now being able and still feeling that same satisfaction at the end of the day because you still feel just as good about what you're doing. It's just for someone else and you're helping someone else, which is always a really good feeling. Being a parent, it, you start to realize um, talking to other, you know, like now you're in the club, you're in the parent <laughs> club, and you just realize that truly saying like, yep, I've found a way to find balance is uh, totally laughable. Um, and I think uh, there's something refreshing and relatable <laughs> to be able to just admit that to each other. Um, again, that's that's why I love going to CrossFit class, because there's a safe space to talk to other moms and dads and just be like, yeah, no such thing as balance. So really, you're, it's nice to be away from competition so that you can um, spread your energies out in a different way. And But you're, you're gonna always feel like something has to give. So when you're putting your energies and, and attention into um, one or two or at max three things in your life, other things have to give. And even with, even when you're balancing that, that, that between three, so let's say those three are your health and fitness, your family, and your job. Um, at any one time, the two of those are suffering a little bit because one is the focus. And so um, it's finding a way, for me, it's finding a way to um, be okay with that, understand that it's, you're not gonna be perfect at any one of those. And then there's, um, they're, they're just like anchoring points, like grounding points that you have that you're like, if I'm able to um, do this at least relatively consistently, so 80% of the time I'm able to do, I'm able to go to the gym or um, I, I have Bo signed up, my son, I have him signed up for a swim class and when I don't bring him, my husband brings him. So, you know, we're, we're doing something enriching for, for our son at the moment. Okay, that's like, it kind of relieves the the mom guilt a little bit, and um, you, you feel you can just be okay with balancing the non-balance of life, because that is life. <laughs> just being okay with the chaos. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I I totally agree, and I think um, for me, one of the interesting things over the past couple years has been just finding out like what is that minimum that I need in order to be okay, be able to still bring my energy to the other areas so for my own health and fitness it's I've gone weeks like during my intern year of residency where I went like two weeks without working out at all like not even breaking a sweat and then I would start to feel really depressed and I would start to get like on edge and angry and I realized okay I need to at least get a minimum of like two to three workouts a week even if it's something that I do in my house really quick um or do some burpees like last night we all did burpees in our um in our house here we did 100 burpees because we didn't have time to work out um, 
So it's for me, it was finding out like what is the minimum, and it doesn't only, always have to be a full class at the gym. It can be something small. Um, and then again, I totally agree with the there's you can't there's no way you can do it all, and you can't um, you can't. It's it's like scary for me thinking about yeah in the next couple of years I do want to start a family and what is going to have to give and where what are going to be those areas where um that are not as important what do I what do I want to prioritize because I know there's no way um that you can you can't do a good job at anything if you're trying to do too much yeah I think it's great finding that minimum I think that um that's another benefit from the, the training that we did. So, and any any time you are um, strive for, work hard for a, a big goal and are able to complete it, you can take away so many lessons from that that you apply to the next phase in your life. And so, I think you're right on. You're you know finding those minimums now um, of what you do for um, your to take care of yourself so that you can give your best to your to your family and yeah. to your job is is. Um, is great like that you're putting in that work now and that's making you a better parent before you're even a parent so it's so true it's like crossfit is such a great metaphor for life and i always said that training for the crossfit games was just like you're on the fast track to learning a lot of these life lessons in a short period of time but it's the same thing you think about when you think about programming like how many times a month do i need to do pull-ups in order to maintain my pull-ups or you know things like that you can apply it to any area of your life all right, so as we start winding down, I want to talk about some things outside of the gym that are important for your health and your well-being, whether it's mental or physical or emotional. What are some of the things that you guys have found to be very important um, besides just your physical exercise in the past few years or during these different phases? Um, I can kind of talk the most about over the last year. It's been literally anything other than gym things. So, and my, my boyfriend has been very adamant that I find new hobbies and new other things. Like, he was like, we gotta get you interested in things that have nothing to do with sports. Like, what else do you like? Like, do you wanna go to the movies? Do you want, like, anything else? And the found, the thing that I've found is that he, he is really wonderful about, he was extremely supportive, but it's now trying to be supportive in the completely opposite direction. It's now like, I will be the person that will never bring up CrossFit to you. I will be the person that, like, we don't talk about exercise. Like, I don't care how your workout went. Like, I'm not gonna ask you those questions. Which, but like, I need that, right? Because we're still in the CrossFit world and doing events like this, which is lovely. But like, I, he's doing a really good job of like bringing me back to reality. I, like, you're still not, or we still need to find other things. Like, we need to find those interests. And the thing that I found that I love the most and makes me happy is cooking, which is something that I never really thought that I would love that much because it was like rice and broccoli and chicken for the last however many years. So I didn't really cook a lot, but now because I'm not necessarily as worried about the macros or what's in it or how much butter goes into it or all those things, it's now just really fun for me to like bake food and to try new recipes and it's a good time for me to like experiment on other things that is so completely outside the realm of anything fitness that I've ever done in my life that it's really fun to like find this new hobby that we support and every single weekend he's like well what are the recipes we want to try this week and we'll like make a grocery list and that's what like will be our outing for the weekend and then throughout the week he'll like support it and talk to me about it and tell me if it needs more acid and be like a jerk about it um, so it's like really fun for me to have found that kind of hobby and I'm still literally actively searching for other things that I'm randomly stumbling upon and like oh I really like to color which is like another like very therapeutic thing that um, I didn't ever know was something that could totally zone my brain out but that calms me down I've tried meditation which I haven't been able to get into yet I do like journaling but I'm not consistent enough at it so I've definitely tried a whole bunch of things but cooking with music on in my head is one of the things that like will totally relax me and that I need that is completely outside of CrossFit World to give me something that it has nothing to do with the way that my body functions or my workout in that day or the fitness aspect that is very therapeutic for me to continue to live a healthy lifestyle towards the things that I want to do for the rest of my life. I love it. I've, I've realized that um, connecting with other people um, eats my soul. <laughs> so I, uh, I've um, gone to great lengths to make sure that uh, we see our family on both sides and um, that we see friends. Even in this first 15 months um, with my son born, we've traveled all over um, to, to connect with the people that really matter, um, you know, friends in Chicago, going to Madison last year with a three-month-old, um, 
you know, like, hey, Julie, you're going to be in Baltimore. Awesome. I'm going to drive an hour and we're going to hang out for yeah. that afternoon, <laughs> you know. And so I, I have to, like, talk myself into it because, you know, it takes that extra effort. I actually think of myself as an introvert where, you know, you, you're ti I get tired out from uh, big social activities, but at the same time, it feeds my soul. So um, that's really important. And um, Tim, my husband's right on board with me on that, that that like friend and family connection is so important. And so there's that for my health. That's outside the gym and inside, okay, sometimes. <laughs> and then the second thing outside the gym is my meditation compromise. And I look at you because I, for, like all the po of all the podcasts I listen to, Julie, every almost every guest that Julie has either says they meditate and they're like extremely successful, um, intelligent people, or they're saying they're striving to get there. <laughs> so my meditation compromise um, uh, for like the last six to eight months, I've been able to now listen to um, Insight Timer. It's a, a meditation app. And I will meditate for about 10, five, sometimes it's five to 10 minutes until I fall asleep and then I sleep for a good 20 minutes after. But it's such a good nap. Yeah. And so that's, that's, that's my a great meditation idea. meditation practice now is turning that on and falling asleep to it. It's a good reward for meditation. Get a little nap. <laughs> I love it. I'll, I'll just piggyback off that where one of the things that I still need and prioritize is sleep. I am just not someone who functions when I don't get enough sleep and so I really do my best to prioritize it. It's difficult now in residency, like nights where I'm on call, I really do not like it, but um, I always try to find a way to kind of make it up the best I can and make sure that I make sleep a priority. Are you a good napper? I'm not a good napper. I've never been a napper because once I fall asleep, I'm out for like the night. Um, so there was one day that I was on call. It was actually New Year, around New Year's, and my sister was in, she was coming into town because they were doing a big event at our gym the Saturday before New Year's, and they were kicking it off around like 10 or 11 p.m., and it would finish at midnight, and they were doing like a fake New Year's celebration. And I was on call the night before, so I'm like, I'm just gonna take a little nap in the afternoon, I'll meet you guys at the gym. I wake up at like 1 a.m. Oh my God. <laughs> or like 12.30 and like all these missed calls. And it was a partner thing. So my partner was waiting for me and I just completely slept through it for like, I slept for like seven hours. And then I woke up and you know, my sister and my husband came home. I talked to them for a few minutes and I went back to sleep and slept like eight more hours. <laughs> you're, you're too good of a nap. Yeah, yeah, so I can't risk it. Um, the other thing that I've loved and gotten more, realized more and more how much, how important this is to me is spending time outside and in nature. So I grew up um, being outside a lot in Michigan. We had a cottage. We spent a lot of time on the lake, skiing in the winter and I realized like the last 10 years of my life going through school and work, there are so many months of the year where I don't even experience the outdoors. Like you go into work and it's dark and you leave and it's dark and how um, rejuvenating that has been for me to try to spend more time outside and appreciating, especially when the weather is nice out um, and what huge, huge impact that makes on my mood. I, I like the term nature bath that's been yes. floating what is around it? these um, days. Chin Yin Roku. It's yes. called forest bathing. Just bathe yes. in nature. <laughs> I love it. Wonderful. Well, this has been wonderful. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I always love talking to you. Um, and I think it's so fun for us to think about now at this stage in our lives where we've been through competition. We obviously love CrossFit and to really think about what are, why did we work so hard for our fitness? What are we going to use our fitness for for the rest of our lives? And how are we going to continue to maintain and help other people um, empower them to use their fitness and use their health so that they can do whatever it is that they're really passionate about? So thank you for joining me. Thank you for having us. That was so fun. <laughs> awesome. Hey there, thanks so much for tuning into this episode. I always love chatting with Christy and Lindy and learn so much from them every time I do. Here are some of my biggest takeaways from our conversation. 
Number one was that your time in the gym can be healing in more ways than just exercise. I love how Chrissy talks about going to classes at her affiliate now, not only because she can work out, but also to socialize with other people and in particular to connect with other moms. So often we focus on the exercise benefits of CrossFit, but the community is really where the magic is at. Not only will this environment push you to get the most out of your training, but just connecting with other people is so important for our health. Even if you can't get to an affiliate, finding a way to do your workouts with other people once in a while can help you reap these benefits. My second takeaway was that we don't have to compete every day. We all talk about the change in mindset when approaching our workouts now that we're no longer focused on competition, and an important part of this is a focus on consistency over performance. We still want to challenge ourselves and improve in different ways, but we don't have to put pressure on ourselves to set a new PR every single day. What used to look like an active recovery workout to all three of us, something like a swim, a jog, or a cycling class, is now considered a full workout, and that's okay. More important than setting PRs every day is consistently moving our bodies for decades to come. My third takeaway was about being in awe of your body. I love how in this conversation, Christy talks about being in awe of her body and what it was capable of through pregnancy and now postpartum. I think this is a really cool approach for all of us to take, regardless of what stage of life or fitness that we're in. Rather than focusing on our shortcomings or what we wish our bodies could do, like how much we could lift or how fast we want to be able to run, let's appreciate all the amazing things that our bodies are capable of right now every single day. So I hope you had some good takeaways yourself from this conversation. Thank you again so much for tuning in. To make sure you never miss an episode and to receive exclusive content from me, head to my website, juliefouché.com and subscribe to my email list. If you like what you heard, don't forget to subscribe and consider giving the podcast a five-star rating on iTunes. Also, don't forget to share your stories. If you or someone you know has used lifestyle to overcome a serious health challenge, please send me an email at info at juliefouché.com. I'll choose some of these inspiring stories to share here on future episodes. Don't forget you can train with me through Beyond the Whiteboard by visiting trainwithjuliefouché.com. Thank you again so much for listening, and I'll catch you next time on Pursuing Health. Pursuing Health.